So when we were creating this part, we actually did it in the part itself. And the first thing we did was we created a sketch. Whatever sketches are needed, or whatever constraints are needed for this profile are here. In fact, one of the biggest benefits we have is in the sketch analysis, we've already verified that this part is completely constrained. It means it's not missing any constraints and it doesn't have too many constraints. It has just the right amount of constraints. So what I do is I count up how many constraints I have on the view. In this sketch, I mean, I have four. And I look to see if I have the same four in my drawing. <clears throat> Sorry. Which I do. I have the same four dimensions, except for one problem. I didn't numdink them to get them into decimals. They're still in feet and inches. So what I would do here is I would look at this. Those are the same four I want. The only problem I'm having is when I do a drawing, these are not supposed to cross. It was so convenient and so easy to do stack, but I'm not supposed to have that. So in reality, if I delete this dimension, the dimension I do need is a single dimension from here over to here, from here up. <coughs> All right, I could also right click on this dimension and hit delete and it removes them. We're going to hit undo. Right click on this one and uh, where was that? Ungroup these dimensions, and then I could take this one and move it over here. All right. So that's how it really should look in my sketcher as well. So in my sketcher, I should have done the same thing. This dimension should be down here, and that would be the proper technique having this dimension over here so that the external references don't cross. Now, you notice I went more than a half inch because I want that zero at the end to be a half inch away from the part. <clears throat> and that's how you have to do that, okay? So a proper part would look like this. Again, I'll come over here and I will turn on my grid. That's a quarter of an inch away. I'm going to drop this down to a half inch. Just use that grid to help me line that up. <clears throat> okay. Now, another trick you can do, see this, if you line this, if you can get it to line up on the grid, it's really helpful. If I can grab that, and grab this and move it down to this grid, to where it's pretty much lined up on that. And sometimes it jumps. That's the only problem. I wish there was an easier way for me to tell you how to do that. But you get it kind of lined up there, then you're pretty close all the way around. So when I turn the grid off, no one really knows that I'm not right on the money. Okay. Now, I can highlight all of these, right-click on any one of them, go to Properties, find my value and numdink them all at one time. So I don't numdink until I got them all in there. Or at least I think I have them all. <clears throat> These arrows have to be on the inside. They have to look like all the other ones. So I got to click on that arrowhead and it inverts that. I'll turn off this. Does this two inch need to be there? Because when I looked at this, I only had these four dimensions. On your front view, you have four dimensions. But when I exit out, I have a depth. Remember putting in that depth dimension in our annotation? I have this depth here. That's the two-inch dimension. That depth dimension goes on the right view. So I select OK. Come back over here. That is the two-inch dimension on the depth view. If you recall, 
in the annotations. <clears throat> Uh, if I double click the right view, oh no, it was there already, dang it. Here, uh, there's your right view, and there's your two inch dimension over there. Now, see, I have that on top. So, if I'm going to put that on top there, wouldn't it make more sense for me to drag this up over here? And this and this one should be lined up because when I turn my grid on, that should be about a half inch off. I'm actually kind of a little, a little bit too high. Try to drag it down right about in the middle, somewhere close to a half inch. Uh, this point five zero. I want to make sure that that zero is not too close to the part. I'm going to slide that out, make sure that I'm about a half inch away. Okay. And now I have these dimensions line up with my annotation. <clears throat> Turn on my engineering ISO view. All those dimensions match my drawing and they match my sketch. Okay. Of course, one thing I should do, since I've moved those other dimensions, I should move these as well. They should be pretty similar to what uh, I'm doing in my drawing and my sketch. Right? So when I go to this front view, it looks just like the same thing as you see in the sketch. Same orientation. And it looks just like the same thing as my drawing. Same orientation. Okay. And those are the tips to help you get all the dimensions in that are necessary. Sometimes they come in light gray and they come in uh, dark or magenta or something. Uh, ignore that. It's something in the parameters and I, don't, I haven't figured out why.